I told my mom about the whole thing and after her disappointment, she led me back to Christ again. I started afresh by breaking any closeness and bond I had with the maker. Mom knew it wasn't going to be easy for me to forget about him. She had to change my school. That helped my healing process. Bro John brought back that feeling I had. It dawned on me that I may be having the same feeling I had for a maker here. I became more scared. Dear Lord, please come to my rescue. I don't want to go back to my format again, I muttered absent-mindedly, almost attracting the attention of my bunkmates in the hostel. It was already Saturday morning and I couldn't even gather the courage to go for the Saturday prayer meeting under the mango tree. I wasn't ready to see bro John. I wasn't sure I could control myself. I wasn't sure of this holy crush anymore. After much debate within, I decided to give it a trial. I was going to miss the prayer for anything. I wasn't going to miss the prayer for anything in the world. I wasn't going to allow the devil win the battle over my soul this semester. As the prayer was getting intense, with Bro John speaking in different tongues, Laba Skobolo Koko Koko Kolaba, he suddenly stopped and mentioned my name, asking me to come forward. Why did he call Aha out? Did he want to use her as a prayer point for having a crush on him? Was he aware through the revelation of the Holy Spirit that I was having a crush on him? Let's find out in episode 3. Episode 3 The moment he called me to come forward, I lost my grip. My God! I was like them that dream. Dear precious Jesus, don't let this happen to me. I know I'm having a crush on your beloved son and you have chosen to disgrace me in the front of everyone this morning. Yes, Lord, I deserve to be disgraced. But the truth is, it is just a holy crush and nothing more. I muttered and means trembling. Anyone close to me would think I have been arrested by the Holy Spirit in the prayer session for deliverance. Gradually, the stress shifting away from me. This made my predicament become worse and humiliating. The last time Brother John called someone out like this during a prayer meeting was not funny. We were praying against spirit of principalities and wickedness in high places when suddenly he called out a lady in the department of economics. Immediately he mentioned her name, she started shouting on top of her voice. Personally, I ran away from her because she was standing right beside me. Who would want an evil spirit to jump into her? She started shouting even louder, saying something like, It's not my fault. It's not my fault. She kept shouting and repeating the same phrase while she goes down gradually. But John was full of rage in his face like someone prepared to fight with the devil himself. The lady kept shouting and screaming. I knew the Holy Ghost has caught up with her. And Brother John, as we all know, we would not allow her, her case to go by without flogging out the spirit dwelling in her. Then he went close to her, encouraging her to come out. He claimed hiding in the crowd would give the enemy an avenue to penetrate through other people, and deliverance would not be total. She insisted, shouting to be left alone. After much plea and persuasion, Brother John made a public decree that if she refuses to come out, confess and be delivered, he would instruct the whole fellowship to commence a prayer that would destroy her. Immediately, she heard that. She surrendered willingly like a hardened criminal who suddenly lost all his shooting bullets while combating in defense to a police attack. Thank you, Jesus, Brother John said with a great relief. I could see him sweating profusely and I wished I could help him with a very chilled water to contribute to his ministry. Sister Joy, your body belongs to the temple of the Holy Spirit. You were created to walk in the beauty and righteousness of God, and so shall it be from this moment henceforth. We all chorused, Amen. After which he continued, I believe you have something to tell us. Why family here and shall deliver you as a family? The Holy Ghost shall use all of us to pray through your complete deliverance and restoration. Sister Joy interrupted him amidst tears. She took time to narrate the events that took place which landed her to becoming a corporate prostitute and a member of a dreaded court group on campus. It all started when I lost my mom in a ghastly motor accident. I could not cope with what life brought my way after her death. The whole house turned to a graveyard each time my dad goes to the office. I was always afraid of being alone 
as the spirit of my mom kept appearing to me. While my mom was alive, she was the only friend I had. We prayed together, cooked together, and did almost everything together. She was my real model and best friend. I couldn't do I couldn't do anything without her. We were just so much close. My dad had equal attention for me too. It was evident in the way he showered me with so much love and attention. She was my boyfriend too, just like my mom was my girlfriend. So guys, we've come to the end of the episode. Episode 3, scene 1. We'll continue from the next episode. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and share this story.